Uh, my name is Gary Howes, I'm the planning officer of the UK Garrison. I've been in the Garrison since 2008, January the 1st, and I was actually the 501st member to join the UK Garrison, which is the 501st UK Garrison, so some strange coincidence there. I love Star Wars since I first saw it in 77, and I did actually see it in 1977 when A&H, A New Hope, the first one, episode four as it later became known, at the Dominion Theatre, it was a Christmas present that I went with all of my family, and I was immediately obsessed with the film. And I've remained so throughout, I'm now older than that. When the internet started, probably in the early 2000s, I guess, I discovered that I wasn't the only person that was obsessed with things like Stormtroopers and Star Wars, and I managed to get myself a Stormtrooper helmet, which I treasured. Uh, that developed into a Stormtrooper costume. And why would you have a Stormtrooper costume unless you were going to wear it? How long did it take to make uh, You know what, it's such a long time ago. I joined the garrison after I got my costume. I bought my first costume off the internet without the advice of the garrison. It wasn't the greatest costume. The help I got was phenomenal. I ended up being invited to some people's houses where they would help me put the costume together. So it took maybe a couple of months with various bits of help here and there before I was able to get to the costume to a level that was of clearance standard so that there are levels of standard in order to join the garrison. Once it was cleared, I got out as a stormtrooper within a, a, a week or two. And I haven't looked back, to be quite honest. My next costume. Um, I'm redoing a couple. I'm, I'm, I'm up. Lockdown has made me kind of upgrade a few things, which has been nice. Next costume, I, I'm not sure. I've got a couple of things that I'm thinking about, a couple of projects that I started some time ago that I want to pick up on. I haven't fully decided is the honest answer to that. Best trooping moment, it's impossible to define because what we do is so incredible and at both ends of the spectrum. I've done things that I've dreamed about doing all of my life, I, you know, including appearing in one of the movies as a storm trooper. You can't get better than that. But by the other spectrum, visiting hospitals, doing make a wish troops, helping people who are terminally ill ultimately and being a part of their wish is probably one of the biggest honors you can get. And being part of a team of four stormtroopers that carried the coffin of a young man who had asked for four stormtroopers to carry him at the end of his life, that was probably the biggest honor. I remember once I, I was at a troop in London uh, the Grosvenor House for the taxi drivers who do an annual, London taxi drivers do an annual event and there was a, a little girl there who was blind asked or her carer or her mum asked if she could touch the costume and the, the kind of smile and the sound that she made when she experienced what a stormtrooper looked like from touch is an experience that will stay with me forever it was a, a true joy and I actually have a photograph of that I'm quite lucky of, of, that and I look at that sometimes and it just makes me smile. The file of the first has adapted, adopted rather, a name Bad Guys Doing Good. And it's actually more accurate than people think because we do portray the bad guys of Star Wars, although that's obviously relative and from a certain point of view, but we do do good. We raise a lot of money for charity every year. We try our best to help other charities raise money. And we try and put smiles on people's faces and, and putting a smile on somebody's face is as important sometimes as giving money in a pot. Uh, sometimes people are having a bad day and you can make a difference to that day just by being there and, and I've seen that on many occasions. A&H, A New Hope, Star Wars Episode 4, um, the first one, the original one, the one in 1977, made in 1976 the best Star Wars film, hands down, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. If I could have dinner with any act, well, I don't know, I don't know if any of them are good cooks. That's a real tough question, I'm not actually sure. I'm, does it have to be limited to actors? Because, I, you know, if I could, oh, if I could have dinner anyone, with anybody, anyone it connected would be George with Lucas. Because it was his original concept and idea of this fairy tale in space that nobody believed in, that he had in the early 70s, and his faith in his own ideas 
And that story was so phenomenal and he pushed through and pushed through until eventually he got the film made um, with much resistance. I mean, it was a low budget movie, relatively speaking, because nobody wanted to invest in this crazy idea that Lucas had. And who knew the phenomenon that it was going to become? You know, this movie came out in 1977. Here we are in 2022, and it's as popular as it ever was with TV shows, movies still being watched, the Blu-rays, the downloads, you name it, the toys. Everybody loves Star Wars. It's a great movie, it's a great franchise. It's about good versus evil. It has a fairy tale kind of feeling to it. And we don't have modern day fairy tales so much anymore. And in many respects, for me, Star Wars changed movie making. You know, in the 70s, you had a lot of movies like Taxi Driver, and, you know, Dog Day Afternoon, and all these kind of very heavy um, kind of movies that were quite serious, The Godfather, stuff like this. Star Wars came along at a time when people needed a bit of joy. They needed a bit of something to celebrate and cheer and, and to success. And, and that's why I like the first one, because ultimately it's, a, it's self-contained. You have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have an end of that chapter. But at the end of Star Wars, you leave with a sense of enormous joy that the good guys got what they deserved. They won, they destroyed the Death Star. And that kind of feeling when I watch the movie now has never, ever gone away. And I hope it never, ever does because it's such a wonderful memory. And I still enjoy watching the movies now. I still watch the uh, a, a New Hope probably once every couple of months or so because I still enjoy it. And the idea that I could be a part of that in some small way, albeit as part of the Flavor First, which it, the Flavor First right now is something very, very small. And it's grown and grown and grown and has become part of the Star Wars universe. George Lucas supports us, George Lucas has uh, got behind us and helped and encouraged us and has used us on many occasions. And the ultimate flattery for us was when they asked us to be in the movie. And six of the UKG members were in The Force Awakens. We've had members of American garrisons in The Mandalorian. And you can't get better than that. They, they used a hundred of our guys at premieres. The last couple of premieres we've had have been phenomenal. It, it's great to be involved in something that is such a big part of people's lives. And it's great to be just following a dream that I had when I was 11. I really wanted to do this. And you should never give up on what you want to do, no matter how much people tell you to grow up or do this and that. Getting older is something, you know, that's inevitable. You can't help but get older. Every year, they add another number onto my life. It's meaningless. Growing up, no, I don't feel I have to do that. Growing up is for people who just want to be serious and do all that stuff. The child in me will remain the child in me forever, and I will never suppress it, and I don't think anybody ever should.